Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Al, and today we're making cheese and chive scones. This one's gonna be my first savory dish, and it's great like a little lunchtime snack or something. So let me show you guys the ingredients list. 450 grams of wholemeal flour, 450 grams of self-raising flour, 250 grams of salted butter, 200 grams of grated extra mature cheddar, around 20 grams of chopped chives, around 50 grams of flour just for rolling out the scones, around one pint of milk, and finally you need around 50 grams of parmesan cheese. You'll also need a flat tray with a 3x3 three three inch cutter. Okay, so I've shown you the ingredients list, so let's get to the bake. Two jobs you need to do first, you need to wrap the oven on to about 160 degrees. And the second job you need to do is you need to melt the butter just in the micro, just till it's nice and soft, but not fully melted. Okay, so now we need to actually start working on the bases of the scones themselves. So I'm actually going to be using Kenwood Chef here just to mix all the ingredients together. But you can definitely do this by hand, this is just a quick way of doing it. So what you want to do is you want to add the butter and both the wholemeal flour and the self-raising flour into the bowl. Okay, so we've got the soft butter in there, so now we just need to add the flour, so the wholemeal, add the self-raising flour, and around a, around a pinch of salt. Okay, I'm using this KB here as well, so I'm just going to put it on the machine nice and slowly, just until it's all nicely mixed in. Okay, so you got this nicely mixed in now, so now what you want to do is you want to add the extra mature cheese and the chives. Add the cheese, and add the chives. And now you just want to give these a good mix in. So the reason why I did the cheese on a big grater was because I like to see little bits of cheese in the, in the uh, scone mix, so when you have a finer grater, they'll melt and you won't seem to get them as much, so bigger grater are always the best way. Okay, so this is where you start to bring it to a dough. So I've got the milk here, so now you just need to add this and just try and give it a nice good mix in. Now you don't want to add too much of the milk, you want to just judge it by that and see how you get on. You want to be wettish but not too wet. You want it to uh, form a nice dough without dripping milk really. Add a bit more of the milk. Okay, that's looking like a nice consistency now. Just like a nice soft dough without it dripping wet. Okay, so now you've got your nice dough, now you want to get the plain flour that you've saved and just give it a nice dusting on your work surface. And now here we go, we just drop this nice scone mix right into the middle and don't bash it around too much, you just want it to be nice and solid as one big dough. So that's looking good. And it's not going to need much of a knead, just a little bit of a work around just to get it nice. You should be able to feel it's quite soft though, but without it being like milky or anything, so that's perfect that is, isn't it? That's the perfect consistency that is. A little bit of sticky resistance on it. So now you've got that, now you want to just push it down a little bit and start rolling it out a little bit flatter than what it is. So you don't want to go too flat either. You want to go around about, around about three inches in size wise. So you just want to make it drop nice and flat. And the reason why I did with wholemeal flour instead of just normal self-raising flour is the wholemeal seems to get a bit more of a nutty taste and colour on it. It's like a really nice flavour and consistency and texture to the thing. And uh, the, the wholemeal flour I'm using actually has got like some like, seeds and stuff in it, so it's even better for that matter. So that's looking around the perfect size now. So now we just need to put this onto the baking tray. So you just want to get a little bit of flour and you just want to press down and go straight in. And it's looking about that kind of size just about that kind of thickness, because then you get a nice big, nice scone out of that. They're looking perfect though. So you just want to put all these on this side, and then what you want to do is do your full baking tray. Okay, so now you're going to have to rework the dough a little bit, which is fine. Probably to fit about nine, ten scones out of this, but they are quite nice big scones. So you can always definitely do it with a smaller cutter, and do like nice little mini ones or something. So you just want to flatten that out. Another bit of a rolling pin, and you want to get Get the rest of this mix used, really. Okay, and so these are ready to go and do with nice big scones for about 25 to 30 minutes. Just keep an eye on them, they don't want to go too high in the temperature either. So we'll check back on them. About 10 minutes before they're ready as well, you want to add the parmesan on top, but I'll show you how to do that. So we'll give these about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, everybody, so they've been in for about half an hour to 35 minutes now. So just before they're ready, we want to whack the temperature up to about 180, 
and then you want to just sprinkle them with a little bit of parmesan just for the last five minutes. Okay, so they're looking really, really tasty. You can tell how they're cooked just because it seems quite crisp and quite a firm base on them. So you just want to go around with a little bit of parmesan just to get a bit of extra cheese flavour on. So we've actually got like a cheese slicer here, just as a little bit of like a flaker, just so I can get a little bit of parmesan shavings going on. And you just want to drop a little bit on. It's the last one. Just want to make sure everyone's covered with a little bit of cheese. And you just want to pop them back into the oven for about another five minutes, just to get the nice cheese nicely melted. Okay, I'm going to the bin for about 45 minutes now. That's five minutes, just for that little cheese melt that I've got going on. And these are looking beautiful. Still happy with these. They're ace, they are. Look like the little cheese melt that we've got going on there as well. So they're ready to go. Let's just whack them straight onto a cooling rack. Okay, you just want to grab them straight off into this cooling rack. And these were just cheese, cheese and chives going, but you could do any variation really if you want to do some maybe some like walnuts in it, or you can put some like stilton or something to be really nice. Well, like, you can spring onions, another great idea there. So these are looking really, really great then, guys. They're happy with these. I thought it's like a lunchtime snack or something, so I'm going to have to have them all for my lunch. So if you do have to let these cool down, just give them a quick reheat in the microwave with a little bit of butter, and that'd be really, really perfect. So let me know how you guys got on in the comments or anything, or any variations you did. But that is it, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next bake. My first savoury dish as well, and it's great, it's like a little snack, just after lunch or something, so more as lunch. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm today mine is. So I just want to give these a mix in, and the reason why I've been doing extra great, extra great is. Okay, so these are ready to go. A nice big flat scan, flat scans. <laughs> <laughs> I just spill flour everywhere. 